Okay, so the next section, 3.1, deals with vectors in 2-space, 3-space, and n-space. A lot of this you would have already seen, so we're going to do a quick revision. What is a vector again? It's a directed line segment that corresponds to a displacement from one point A to another point B. Now, the vector from point A to B will be denoted by A, B with an arrow on top, where A is the initial point or the tail, and B is the terminal point, the head. Alternatively, we can take the vector A, B arrow and it just denote it by a vector V bar. Now, if you're given a coordinate point A, given by A, B in the plane, you can construct a vector from the origin to that given point A. And you'll denote it by um, 0, A bar. And that's called the position vector. So for every point in the plane, you can construct a position vector. Now, this position vector, the standard notation, will be given by that um, O, A bar. Uh, you can also write it as a column vector, and you can also write it as a row vector, the coordinate point that is. The individual coordinates A, B are called the components of the vectors, and also be very careful with the next point. Distinguish between the difference of a point, A, B, and a vector centered at the origin, O, A bar, indicated by A, B. The two are not the same. The one indicates a vector and the other one indicates a coordinate point. So be careful there. Note that the order is important when it comes to vectors. So AB is not necessarily the same as BA. And if you have two coordinate points A and B, then the vector with the initial point A and end point B is just denoted as the vector obtained by taking the x component of b and subtracting from that the x component of a and taking the y component of b and from that uh, sub subtracting the y component of a. Two vectors are equal if and only if they have the same length and the same direction. Now this means that you can pretty much take any vector and uh, place its initial point anywhere in, in the plane, or if you work in a 3-space or in space you can place it anywhere. Um, the point is, two vectors will be the same if and only if they have the same direction and the same uh, length. Okay, just note that also the, um, the vector notation for the zero vector, the zero vector is the vector with x component zero, y component zero, uh, it'll be denoted by zero bar. In addition to that, a vector is said to be in standard position if its initial point is at the origin. Let's look at example one. Draw the vector a bar minus 3, 2 in standard position in R2. There you've got the coordinate point minus 3, 2, and there's the position vector with its center initial point at the origin. Okay, looking at the next problem, we've got the two corner points A and B, and there's the first ve position vector of B and the position vector of A. Next, we are asked to find the vector AB arrow, and then we're asked to redraw it in standard position. So there's the vector AB arrow, and now we're going to draw it in standard position. Note that uh, the vector AB, you take the point B, the x component of the point B, and you subtract from that the, y comp uh, the x component of A, and you do the same for Y, and that gives you 2 minus 3. And now we draw it in the standard position by placing the vector AB at the origin 0, 0. Next we have vector operations, so vector addition, scalar multiplication and vector subtraction. So vector addition, we use the parallelogram or head to tail rule. So if you're given two vectors, you add them by adding their respective components together. So u plus v is the x component, has an x component that is equal to the x component of u plus the x component of v and the same for the y component. The y component of u plus v is the same as the y component of u plus the y component of v. 
Next, we have scalar multiplication. So you're given a vector v and a real number c. Then the scalar multiple of the vector v is simply the x component of the vector multiplied with that scalar and the y component of that vector multiplied by the scalar. Next, we look at vector subtraction. If you take this scalar multiple of the vector v and the scalar multiple is negative 1 of v, the negative 1 of v is called the negative of the vector v. Given u and v, you can also write u minus v as simply taking u and adding the negative uh, of the vector v to u. Let's look at the exa first example. There you've got vectors a and b. Go and draw those vectors on the plane. There we've got our xy plane vector A and the vector B. We take B and we place it at its origin at the point minus 3 minus 2. Then we take A and we place that vector's origin at the point 4 minus 1 and then we calculate the vector A plus B. To calculate B minus A we follow the same process. There's minus A, place the vector B at 3, 2 place the vector minus a at 4 minus 1 and use the parallelogram method to calculate b minus a. Okay, next we have example 2. You take the vector c and go and draw it in uh, 3 space, x, y, z axis. There's c. You take twice of c, multiply each component with 2. Negative of 2c points in the opposite direction, multiply each component with minus 2 and there we have half of c. Okay, next we look at vectors in Rn. Uh, now Rn is defined to be the set of all ordered n tuples of real numbers writ written as vectors and it can be expressed in one of, of three forms, either the coordinate point or a row vector or a column vector. Okay, and adding a vector u and v in Rn is the same as adding a u and v component wise. Multiplying u with a scalar c in Rn is the same as component-wise scalar multiplication. And the zero vector is simply very much defined in the same way as R2. Each component has a zero. Next, we have theorem 1. If u, v, and w are vectors in Rn and c and d are scalars, then we have commutativity, so adding two vectors u and v, whether you add u to v or v to u, it's the same. We have associativity. If you add u and v first and add that to w, it's the same as adding v and w first and then adding it to u. Then we have uh, the zero vector. A zero vector is a vector that if you add it to the vector u, it's the same uh, whether you add it on the left or on the right. And that just gives us the vector u back again. So that's what the zero vector is. And then the negative of a vector, if you add a vector and it's negative, you get the zero vector. Next we have distributivity. If you have a scalar multiple of a sum of two um, vectors, then it's the same as the sum of the scalar multiples of the vectors. And this distributivity over a vector multiplied by with the sum of two uh, scalars is the same as multiplying the vector with each scalar and then summing the two results together. Then we have point seven, um, associativity with regards to scalar multiplication, uh, multiplying the uh, vector u with d and then multiplying the result with c is the same as multiplying c and d together and then multiplying that with the vector. Then point 8, if you have the vector u and you have a, sc a scalar multiple of the vector u and the scalar is 1, then that just results in the vector u. Okay, next we have theorem 2, if v is a vector in R and c is a scalar, then 0 times the vector v is the 0 vector, k times the 0 vector is the 0 vector, and number 3 is if you multiply uh, the vector v with uh, the scalar minus 1, then that's just the negative of the vector v. Okay, so let's uh, just for interest sake look at the proof of theorem 
So it's interesting because you're only allowed to use your um, your distributive laws there. So for one, basically what you do is you take the vector 0 times v and that we know we can write that as 0 plus 0 because 0 is a scalar. It's not a vector, it's a scalar. And from that we know by our distributive law that that is 0 times the vector v plus uh, 0 times the vector v okay so from there what do we know we can on the left hand side add the vector the negative of that vector and on the right hand side we can take this sum between those two vectors okay and we can go and again add negative of that vector okay without changing the the equation so that then implies that on the right hand side you've got if you take a vector and you subtract its negative then we get the zero vector on the left hand side and that is going to be equal what I have on the right hand side this is going to cancel with that to form the zero vector okay so that's going to be the zero vector and we know that the zero vector plus any vector is always just the vector so we have just proved that the scalar zero multiplied by any vector is the zero vector all right Okay, let's look at the proof of uh, theorem 2, property 3. You guys can do this uh, theorem 2.2, .2, uh, the proof of that on your own as an exercise. So in 3 we have, um, what we're going to do there is, we're going to use the point 1. So basically, um, from 1, uh, from 1 we have the following. You've got that the 0 vector, we said, okay that you can write pretty much as 1 plus minus 1 times that vector and we said the 0 vector times v, or 0 times v is the 0 vector so that's the 0 vector now from there you can apply the distributive law so v distributes in and we have that that is minus 1 multiplied by v okay and that is the zero vector and from there we have that the left hand side we can go and manipulate it we can go and um, we can add the negative of v on both sides so that is going to be zero plus negative v okay and what happens uh, what happens to this vector and that vector well if you add a vector to its negative it becomes the zero vector okay so that is what we have there on the left hand side and that is this the zero vector plus negative v is just negative v okay and what do we know about the zero vector plus any vector? It is just that vector. Okay, so if you multiply a scalar minus one with any vector, that is then just the negative uh, vector. Okay. All right, so um, this, this might seem obvious, but uh, you guys need to be aware of the fact that um, you know the way that you define addition is going to influence what the negative of a vector looks like. If you define addition as we've done before in this section, if you define it in that way, then specifically this 
um, this is how the negative of a vector will work. But if you define addition in a different way, as you will see later in chapter 4, it's going to influence what the negative of a vector looks like. Okay, the next example is just to illustrate how um, solving um, uh, vector equations, how it works. Okay, it's exactly the same as normal algebra and real numbers. In uh, in Rn, what's going to happen is um, this expression here, uh, the expression plus a bar. Uh, minus 2 2 a bar minus b bar that is simply going to be just again you distribute it okay minus 4 a bar is exactly the same as normal real numbers okay and that we know is equal to x plus 2 a minus b so that's just going to basically imply that um, 2x bar um, plus 3a minus 4a bar plus 2b is going to be equal to 2a bar minus b bar, okay? So it works exactly the same. So you can go and solve for 2x, uh, 2x bar simply as um, 3a bar um, minus 3b bar, which then just implies that x is pretty much the scalar 3 over 2 multiplied by the difference between the vector a and b. Okay. Okay, linear combinations of vectors. If, if W is a, a vector and it's a linear combination of V1, V2, and Vk up until Vk, then we can find scalars C1, C2, Ck such that we can express W bar as C1, V1 plus C2, V2 up until Ck, Vk. C1, C2, up until Ck, these are all called the coefficients of the linear combination. And for the case where k is equal to 1, the vector w bar is C1, V1, meaning that uh, w is a scalar multiple of V1. Okay, let's look at the next example. Write w as a linear combination of u and v. Okay, so we are asked to write uh, the vector w as um, a linear combination of vectors u and v respectively. So what we want to do is um, uh, we need to find we need to find two scalars. Uh, say C1, C1 and C2 such that uh, we can write the vector W as C1 times the vector U plus C2 times the vector V, uh, which is basically the same as saying that the vector 0, 3 needs to be the same as C1 multiplied by the vector 2, 1 plus C2 multiplied by the vector 1 minus 1 which implies that essentially what we want to solve is we want to solve these two equations. That's my first equation and we want to solve 3 C1 plus minus 1 C2. Okay, so, um, so if you add, add 2 
to 1, uh, we obtain, what do we obtain? We obtain um, 3C1 equals to 3, which equals, well, which implies that C1 is 1. Um, and so because, um, because C1 is 1, and so from 1, So from 1 we have, um, we can then, we can then basically plug that into 1. So making C1 1, we get C2 is minus, uh, C2 is minus 2. Alright, so hence uh, your vector W is basically the vector U minus twice the vector v. Alright.